Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the second small web lecture on structural equation modeling. Uh, today, we're briefly going to talk about now that you've estimated all of your results, you've got all of the physical statistics in place. How do you report this? What are some of the things you have to consider when writing this up uh, for a journal or for an assignment? So let's take a look. So uh, according to Morrison, there are basically 12 things uh, we have to consider when we want to write up, we want to report our uh, structure equation models. So the first thing is we always have to, so I kind of like split it into two categories. I split it in stuff you have to put into the methods section, and I put things that you have to put into the results section. So in the methods section, there are four things that you kind of have to report, and I'll go through it in more detail uh, in a bit. Always remember to report the software that you utilize because different software has different estimation methods. So M plus and LizDraw, for example, utilizes different approaches. So it's important to mention that as well as the specific criteria, fit criteria that you're utilizing to evaluate or compare models. So that's like your CFI, TLI, what things you look at for measurement quality and et cetera. The second thing is you have to report um, a power analysis to kind of show that your sample is large enough to be able to kind of simulate the, the result that you want. All right, so always report power analysis. Third part is um, you always have to report how did you go about managing missing data? Did you remove them? Are you utilizing all cases? Are you utilizing some other imputation method? It's really important because people need to be able to replicate what you've done uh, at a later stage, for example. And then finally there, we have to also mention the type of estimation method used. So are we utilizing um, maximum likelihood or robust maximum likelihood estimators, or are we utilizing Bayes? Um, this is important because each one of these estimation methods have a certain reason for its use. Um, unfortunately, uh, most of us will kind of like utilize uh, multi-level, uh, multi maximum likelihood uh, estimation methods. So um, on the positive end there, it's uh, pretty straightforward to kind of like uh, utilize it, but it's dependent on certain things like normality, for example, multivariate normality. So if it's not normal, you can't utilize multi-level uh, maximum likelihood estimation. So then there are things that you kind of have to take consideration in the results. So the first thing is we always report some other form of descriptive statistics, uh, reliabilities and correlations. Why? Because we need to show on the one end uh, multivariate normality, right? If it's not data is not normally distributed, we have to either correct it or utilize a different estimator. And we have to kind of show that the items that we have are actually reliable as we, um, you know, it's a fundamental principle. The next thing is we have to always mention and describe the competing measurement models that we are estimating. So if you have four models that you're testing, theory informed, you have to report each one of them, mention them, describe them in as much detail as possible. Number seven, always report every piece of fit statistics for every model that you estimate, uh, even if they don't fit the data very well. Uh, number eight, they indicate that you have to put some other graph of all your models. Now, um, and I'll expand this in a minute, I would say just go with your best fitting measurement model, because that's the one that's kind of transformed into a structural model. Um, in this, you report all of your standardized factor loadings for each one of your, uh, for your best fitting measurement model. Number 10, this is now going to the structural model part. Uh, you have to always mention the amount of variance that's declared for each one and each one of the latent factors. Um, and then the, the final two things is kind of like uh, related to the, the impact of the model and also um, if you make any modifications to it. So number 11 is if you make any mod modifications to the model, like after you've estimated it, you have to have a very strong theoretical reason for it. And then finally, you have to have some other form of an indicator for um, effect size of your entire model. So software packages, like I said, uh, report M plus R, AMOS, whichever the one is kind of that you are um, going to be utilizing. And then also be very specific with regards to the criteria that you are going to use to evaluate model fit. Um, the standard ones, like I've mentioned, and also in a previous video, uh, we've got absolute indices, um, incremental and comparative fit ones. Okay, so really important to kind of um, mention that, as well as the criteria that you use to estimate measurement um, quality. Yeah. So there's a nice program here. Uh, 
a website that I also that I always use to do my own power analyses. Um, the link is in the will be in the description. But this kind of like helps us to show that the sample size is quite large enough for the study that you want to do. So always report and estimate um, your power. So I incorporated these two things together because they go together. So the one end is you have to report how did you go about managing your missing data. This is important because if you impute things, um, it will change your overall fit. It will change uh, your results. If you remove cases or you remove items or people, um, that will also affect your final results. So it's really important that you tell your reader how you went about uh, going about utilizing this data. And then also, that also has an impact on the type of estimation method you'll use to kind of get to your overall fit. Like I mentioned, um, primarily we'll be utilizing maximum likelihood because of the distribution of the data. It's normally distributed, we use ML, uh, if not MLM or uh, MLR, but predominantly we'll utilize uh, maximum likelihood, but it's important to and report that. So here I give you an indication of what you report for um, your descriptives. Here we kind of like see that uh, most, if we utilize a minus one and plus one for uh, skewness kurtosis as the cutoff point for normality, we see this HRM factor, the autonomy factor, and the innovative work behavior factor. They're not very normally distributed. So that tells us in this case, we would have to use a more robust um, estimation, estimation method like MLR, for example. Here, I estimated the uh, composite reliability, that's P and alphas. And here, you kind of like see all of them with the exclusion of idea generation was uh, reliable. And then just basic correlations to show the interactions. So now we get to our sixth part and seventh part. Mention all of your competing measurement models and give their fits a distance. So usually what I do is I just provide a very short description of it. Here, I only had one, it was a confirmatory factor analysis on one specific instrument. And I just basically said, um, model one, all of the items load on one factor. Model two, there's two factors, perseverance and passion. And model three, it's a hierarchical one. So I just basically describe it and how the items load on each factor. And then I report all of the fit statistics. So here you'll see for each one of the models, um, there's the chi-square, the degrees of freedom, CLI, TFI, uh, so on and so forth. We do this because we have to compare these models with one another. Um, so here we can kind of like see if we compare it, uh, everything's kind of like the same. CLI, this is non-significant. Uh, so this is kind of marginal. We have to do some other modification later. Um, this is acceptable. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. This should be exactly the same. So here we will kind of like see the only thing that's different is that RMC is slightly lower and we have one degree less of freedom. So not a lot of criteria, but at least we can say model three seems to be the best. So they also ask you then to do this in a graphical form. So this is kind of those exact same models, but drawn, right? So there should not necessarily be that big of a difference if you have a second order and a first order factor like model two and three, um, but it's important to kind of show what you are testing to your reader. Point number eight. So still point number eight, this is then something for a, uh, a full relational model. So this was only for like one specific instrument, which was a certain study. This is now for an entire model, right? And as you can see, we, uh, we draw our model and we add the specific values in where they are important. The only thing that's missing here, and I'll get to that at the end, is that we did not report the variances for each one of these factors. Okay. So once we have that, the next thing we have to report is for our best fitting measurement model. So for, for model three, for example, which is this one, uh, we would go and report the standardized item loadings and um, standardized errors. So this model is a bifactor model. Don't worry too much about it. But you mentioned the items, the factors that they load on, their item loadings, indicate if they're significant or not, and mention their uh, standard error. So the item uniqueness here is your residual variances, right? And you want them to kind of be as low as possible. Right. So the 10th thing that we have to do is we have to mention the, the variance that's explained for each of the factors. And here you'll see um, the, the 
estimates here is kind of like the indicators of the, the variance for each of these factors. And we mentioned them so in each one of these factors. So person environment fit declares 2.74, 27.4% uh, of the variance in happiness. Happiness um, predicts 33.2% uh, of the variance in task performance. Okay, pretty straightforward, right? Um, and the last thing is if we do any modifications. So as you remember, our models fitted the data, but not that well. Uh, and the results showed if I correlate item five and six, my chi-square will improve significantly and therefore I will get fit on my data. But I have to have a justification for this. And both these items load on engagement. So it should be okay to correlate them. You can't correlate item five with item four, for example, because they're not the same factor. Okay, with that said, I hope that you are now able to um, report your structure equation models in a very nice and beautiful APA.